Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. So if you are new here, we are going on a Quentin Tarantino run, and today we're checking out Inglorious Bastards. So Quentin Tarantino can't miss. I've loved every film that I watched from this dude. They're so unique, and I'm really hoping for more of the same. So what do you know about this movie, babe? I know it came out in 2009, and it's another World War II movie, which would probably be our fourth one on this channel. So go check out all those World War II movies that we have. Those are a little old, so if they're crusted and busted and edited some stuff out, you know, don't blame us. They're like a year old at this point. Yeah. But anyways, I'm really excited to get into this, man. Like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate you guys so much. Quentin Tarantino is just so unique, man. Yeah. He's definitely, he's definitely a lot of fun. So let's get into it. Let's go. These kids these days, we gotta have music immediately, don't we? Oh, cool. <laughs> when did you say this came out again? 2009. Chapter one, once upon a time in Nazi occupied France. 1941. It's a cute little spot. So those must be soldiers. That'd be so scary. You either think they're gonna like kill you or make you go to war, right? Well, if they're showing up to your farm, they're either about to take your house or make themselves at home or something. Maybe use your resources? Yeah, maybe maybe use more than that. Est-ce la propriété de Perrier Lapadite Je suis Perrier Lapadite. C'est un plaisir de vous rencontrer, Monsieur Lapadite. Je suis le colonel SS Hansland. Puis-je faire pour vous J'espérais que vous m'inviteriez à entrer chez vous, afin que nous puissions avoir une discussion. Certainement. Okay. Didn't give him a choice, did he? But he was kind of nice. Yeah, he's nice. He's got 13 of his boys with him. Linda. Linda. Aussi ma famille. Colonel SS Hans Landa, mademoiselle, à votre service. Les rumeurs qui circulent dans le village au sujet de votre famille sont tout à fait fondées. Monsieur Lapadite, vos filles sont toutes plus jolies les unes que les autres. Merci. Je vous en prie. Asseyez-vous. Distracted. Suzanne, tu veux bien aller chercher du vin pour le colonel ah, mais non, merci, monsieur de la petite patte vin. Puisque nous sommes sur une exploitation laitière, je suppose sans risque de me tromper que vous avez du lait Oui. Alors, je préfère du lait. Très bien. Tu veux bien aller fermer la fenêtre Merci. This is already unique for Tantino, isn't it like the way it shot. Mm. Je dis bravo. Merci. It's a little different, but it's kind of the same. Très bien. And guys, if we changed our view up, it's because there's so many subtitles in it that we inverted the way that we normally show the movie. Nous discuté, il serait préférable de discuter en privé. J'ai laissé mes hommes à l'extérieur. Si cela ne les offense pas, auriez-vous l'obligeance de demander à vos charmantes dames de sortir? Charlotte, tu veux bien monter ça dehors? Le colonel et moi, on a deux, trois mois à se dire. Monsieur Lapadite, je suis au regret de vous informer que j'ai épuisé l'étendue de mon français. Continuer à le parler si peu convenablement ne ferait que me gêner. Cependant, je crois savoir que vous parlez un anglais tout à fait correct, n'est-ce pas Oui. Ma foi, il se trouve que moi aussi. Puisque nous sommes ici chez vous, je vous demande la permission de passer à l'anglais pour le reste de la conversation. Certainement. Well, I'm very familiar with you and your family. I have no way of knowing if you are familiar with who I am. Are you aware of my existence? Yes. This is good. Are you aware of the job I've been ordered to carry out in France? Yes. Please tell me what you've heard. I've heard the Führer has put you in charge of running up the Jews left in France. Who are either hiding or passing for Gentile. The Führer couldn't have said it better himself. But uh, the meaning of your visit is um, mysterious to me. The Germans looked through my house nine months ago for hiding Jews and found nothing. I read the reports on this area. But like any enterprise, when under new management, there's always a slight duplication of efforts. 
most of it being a complete waste of time, but needs to be done nevertheless. I just have a few questions, Monsieur Lapelite. If you can assist me with answers, my department can close a file on your family. Seeing it like this doesn't make it seem so long ago, does it? No. Before the occupation, there were four Jewish families in this area. All dairy farmers like yourself, de la Rac, the Lavite, and the Dreyfuses. Is that correct? Uh, to my knowledge, those were the Jewish families among the dairy farmers. I could add. Uh, would it disturb you if I smoked my pipe? Oh, please, Monsieur Lapetit, this is your house. Make yourself comfortable. <laughs> No. It's a gentleman, huh? I know. According to these papers, all the Jewish families in this area have been accounted for, except Kajus. Somewhere in the last year, it would appear they've vanished, which leads me to the conclusion that they've either made good their escape or someone is very successfully hiding them. What have you heard about them? Only rumors. I love rumors. Facts could be so misleading. <laughs> What rumors have you heard regarding the Dreyfuses? Do you think he's concealing them? I don't know. Again, I, I can't tell. This is just a rumor, but uh, we heard the Dreyfuses had made their way into Spain. Maybe he so is, because that fight... the rumors you've heard have been of escape. We. Oui. Uh, yes. Having never met the Dreyfuses, would you confirm for me the exact members of the household and their names? <clears throat> there were five of them. The father... Jacob, wife Miaya, and her brother Bob. Her brother Bob? Man, I know a Bob. How old is Bob? 30, 31. The Bob I know is 30, 31. <laughs> Continue. And the children, Amos and Shoshana. Ages of the children? Uh, Amos was uh, 9 or 10. And Shoshana? Shoshana was uh, 18 or 19. I'm not really sure. Are we about to go under his feet? I thought it was just going to be under the table, but geez. Well, that you thought he was hiding him under the table. I, don't, I wasn't sure. The hell are you? However, before I go, could I have another yes. glass of your delicious milk? Well, of course. You think he knows? Are you aware of the nickname the people of France have given me? No, probably. I have no interest in such things. But you're aware of what they call me. I'm aware. What are you aware of? That they call you the John, too. Precisely. I understand your trepidation in repeating it. Heidrich apparently hates the moniker the good people of Prague have bestowed on him. <laughs> Actually, why he would hate the name the hangman's baffling to me. <laughs> it would appear he's done everything in his power to earn it. But I, on the other hand, love my unofficial title precisely because I've earned The feature that makes me such an effect hunter of the Jews is, as opposed to most German soldiers, I can think like a Jew, where they can only think like a German. <laughs> More precisely, a German soldier. <laughs> now, if one were to determine what attribute the German people share with a beast, it would be the cunning and the predatory instinct of a hawk. But if one were to determine what attributes the Jews share with the beast, it would be that of the rat. The Führer and Goebbels propaganda have said pretty much the same thing. But where our conclusions differ is I don't consider the comparison an insult. Consider for a moment the world a rat lives in. A hostile world, indeed. If a rat were to scamper through your front door right now, would you greet it with hostility? Absolutely he would. I suppose I would. Has a rat ever done anything to you to create this animosity you feel toward them? Rats spread disease to bite people. Rats were the cause of the bubonic plague, but that's some time ago. I propose to you any disease a rat could spread, a squirrel could equally carry. Would you agree? Yet I assume you don't share the same animosity with squirrels that you do with rats, do you? Yet they're both come up in your house, though. Not? And except for the tail, they even rather look alike, don't they? Well, they, they will. They'll go, they'll go up in your attic it's if you want. interesting them. thought, there, couldn't it? However interesting as the thought may be, it makes not one bit of difference to how you feel. If a rat were to walk in here right now as I'm talking, would you greet it with a source of your delicious milk? Probably not. I didn't think so. You don't like them. You don't really know why you don't like them. All you know is you find them repulsive. Consequently, a German soldier conducts a search of a house suspected of hiding Jews. Where does the hawk look? He looks in the barn, he looks in the attic, he looks in a cellar, he looks everywhere he would hide. So many places it would never occur to a hawk to hide. However, the reason the Führers brought me off my Alps in Austria, placed me in French cow country today, is because it does occur to me. As I'm aware what tremendous feats human beings are capable of once they abandon dignity. May I smoke my pipe as well? <clears throat> 
Please uh, go and make yourself at home. Oh, shoot. Do you see why it's stressful now? You see how they just come in your house like this and mock you and act like they own it? And not only that, he says he basically knows where everyone hides and they're like up under the floorboard. Mm -hmm. Kind of obvious spot if my you think job, about it. That I must have my men enter your home before I can officially cross your family's name off my list. If there are any irregularities to be found, rest assured they will be. That is unless you have something to tell me that makes the conducting of a search unnecessary. I might add also any information that makes a performance of my duty easier will not be met with punishment. Actually, quite the contrary. It will be met with reward. And that reward will be your family will cease to be harassed anyway by the German military during the rest of our occupation of your country. That's crazy. Brother. What a tough situation. You're sheltering enemies of the state, are you not? Yes. Mm. Oh, no. You're sheltering them underneath your floorboards, aren't you? Yes. Point out to me the areas where they're hiding. Oh, no. Yeah, but if he wouldn't have told them the truth, they would have told his daughters. They are listening, they don't speak English. I know. Yes. I'm going to switch back to French now, and I want you to follow my mascarade. Is that clear? Yes. Monsieur Lapadit, je vous remercie pour le nez de votre hospitalité. Il me semble que nous en avons terminé. Ah, mesdames! Je vous remercie pour le temps que vous m'avez consacré. Please don't hurt them if, you're, if you gave them up. They Please. won't. They won't. They're just gonna walk away. Oh, she's trying to escape. Run. That must be the one that said that was she was like 18 or something. Yeah. You better zig. Why aren't they shooting her? Probably about to. Oh my goodness. This is like Ramsey and Rickon. Au revoir, Shushana! He'd rather hunt her later. Oh my gosh. Is that like, I'll find you anyways? <laughs> Chapter two. Glorious bastards. Guys, I'm gonna pause it real quick. Let me just say, that was 21 minutes of just absolutely on eggshells. Yeah. That was insane. That was terrible. That was heartbreaking. That guy is unpredictable, but he's like charming. To, like, you know what I'm saying? He was charming in the sense that he was trying to like. He was put just on such a, a smug little. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was like trying to Obviously, put on I know a what show. You mean. I'm just joking. But yeah, that was crazy, man. That was that was 21 minutes of just craziness right there. Jeez. All right, let's go, guys. I Chapter two. My name is Lieutenant Aldo Rain, and I'm putting together a special team. I need me eight soldiers. Eight Jewish American soldiers. Now, y'all yeah. might have heard rumors about the Armada happening soon. Well, we'll be leaving a little early. We're going to be dropped into France, dressed as civilians. Once we're in enemy territory, as a bushwhacking guerrilla army, <laughs> we're going to be doing one thing and one thing only, killing Nazis. Nazi ain't got no humanity. They're the foot soldiers of a Jew-hating, mass-murdering maniac, and they need to be destroyed. That's why any and every some bitch we find wearing a Nazi uniform, they're gonna die. Okay, I think I get the premise. <laughs> we will be cruel to the Germans. Through our cruelty, they will know who we are. And the German will be sickened by us. And the German will talk about us. And the German will fear us. German closes their voice? eyes at night. Sound good? Yes, sir! <laughs> Each and every man under my command owes me 100 Nazi scout, you will die trying. Nein, 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 nein. Because he has a little Indian in him. That's supposed to be Hitler right here. Schlachten meine Männer zu fliegen. Kennen Sie schon das neueste Gerücht, dass Sie in Ihrem angstgetriebenen Wahn verbreiten? Der, der meine Männer mit einem Prügel totschlägt, der, den man Bärenjude nennt, soll ein Golem sein. Das ist doch Soldatentratsch. Kein Mensch glaubt wirklich, dass der Bärenjude ein Golem ist. Und wenn doch. Die schlüpfen uns doch ständig durch die Finger wie Gespenster, die nach Belieben erscheinen und verschwinden können. Sie wollen beweisen, dass sie aus Fleisch und Blut sind. Dann bringen Sie sie mir! Nackt an ihren Füßen am Eiffelturm aufhängen. 
Kleist. Ja, ein Führer. Befehl an alle in Frankreich stationierten deutschen Soldaten. Der jüdische Entarte, bekannt als Bärenjude, ist von jetzt an nie mehr als Bärenjude zu bezeichnen. Ja, mein Führer. <lacht> Wünschen Sie noch den gefreiten Butz zu sehen? Wer oder was ist ein gefreiter Butz? Der Soldat, den Sie persönlich treffen wollten. Sein Trupp ist in einen Hinterhalt der Juden von Leutnant Reins geraten. Er hat als einziger überlebt. Selbstverständlich will ich ihn sehen. Danke, dass Sie mich erinnern. Schicken Sie ihn rein. Okay, so who is this guy? Hitler? No, 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 the guy he's about to see. They said he was a sole survivor or something? Yeah. Feldwebel Rachtmann, Ludwig und ich waren die einzigen Überlebenden des Angriffs. Ein Mann hat uns bewacht, die anderen entfernten die Haare. Oh! Oh, he's scouting. Is that Quentin? It kind of looks like him, don't it? Ew! That gives me a headache. How many members does he have in the Inglorious Bastards? Because they all owe 100 heads. It was like what? There was like eight of them, it looked like. Hey, that's 800, huh? <laughs> nah, let me count. Oh, there's a bunch. <laughs> the gun. Hey, Hirschberg. Send that crap, Sarge over. You. Oh, they're about to carve his head. I thought they did it when they were dead, not alive. Sergeant Van Lieutenant Aldo Rang, pleased to meet you. You know what sit down means, Warner? How's your English, Warner? Because need be, we got a couple fellas can translate. Wiki Air, an Austrian Jew, got the f out of Munich while the getting was good. Came American, got drafted, come back to give y'all what for. I understood Here exactly what he said, to be honest. <laughs> Sergeant Hugo Stiglitz. Heard of him? Everybody in the German army's heard of Hugo Stiglitz. <laughs> <laughs> The reason for Hugo Stiglitz's celebrity among German soldiers is simple. As a German enlisted man, he killed 13 Gestapo officers. Oh, damn. You know what that means? You know what the Gestapo is? Mm -hmm. Let's go. That's crazy. Instead of putting him up against the wall, the high command decided to send him back to Berlin to be made an example of. Needless to say, once the bastards heard about him, he never got there. Oh, they broke him out. Dang. And he's just chilling. He's not even flinching. Mm -mm. The IVs pulled up. So this is basically just like a coming to age story. It's like a little feel good coming to age <laughs> story. Here you go, Stiglitz. Tenor Aldo Rain. These are the bastards. I think you show great talent, and I pride myself in having an eye for that kind of talent. But your status as a Nazi killer is still amateur. We all come here to see if you want to go pro. He's like the Nick Fury of Nazi hunters. Yeah. <laughs> Can I assume you know who we are? You're elder, the Apache. Woo! Up the road a piece, there's an orchard. Besides you, we know there's another crop patrol f***ing around there somewhere. Patrol were to have any crack shots, that orchard would be a goddamn sniper's delight. If ever wanna eat a sauerkraut sandwich again, <laughs> you gotta show me on this here map where they are. They can't expect me to divulge information that would put German lives in danger. I just take that finger of yours and point out on this here map where this party's being held, how many's are coming, and what they brought to play with. I respectfully refuse, sir. Damn. Hear that? Yes. Oh, that must be that bat he was talking about. <laughs> the, what do you call him? Sergeant Donnie Donovan. The Bear Jew? Yeah, the Bear Jew. I know him better by his nickname. The Bear Jew. <laughs> I heard of the Bear Jew. What'd you hear? Beats German soldiers with the club. He bashes the brains in with a baseball, but Werner, I'm gonna ask you one last goddamn. If you still respectfully for calling the Bear Jew. And your Jew dogs. <laughs> uh oh. Donnie! Yeah! Guy's German here wants to die for country. Lodge him. Oh no. Yeah, but would they have let him go anyways? Probably not, right? There's Donnie. He's gonna turn into the damn Sandlot over here. I'm so scared. I don't wanna see it. I don't wanna. Dang. Mm. 
bared you. Damn it, Man, he got bro. it kind of easy, didn't he? Yeah. Donnie, bring out another one over here. All right. Oh, no. English? Nine. Wiki, ask him if he wants to live. Some live and blood. Yeah, sir. Tell him to point out on this map the German position. Zeig uns auf der Karte, wo die deutsche Stellung ist. <laughs> ask him how many German. Wie viele Deutsche? Könnten zwölf sein. Round about twelve. Wie haben Sie diese Tortur denn überlebt? Oh, obviously, right. That's right where we're back at. Now, when you report what happened here, you can't tell them you told us what you told us. They'll shoot you. They're gonna want to know why you so special. We let you live. Tell them we let you live so you could spread the word through the ranks what's gonna happen to every Nazi we find. Sie werden kein Wort darüber verlieren. Kein einziger Stepper. Wir Einheit geriet in einen Hinterhalt. Sie konnten fliehen. Kein weiteres Wort. Damn, he fell for it too, didn't he? Man sie eben so gebrandmarkt wie die anderen Überlebenden. Ja, mein Führer. So I'm gonna give you this something you can't take off. Hmm. What is this mark? Oh, he put it on his forehead. So they always know. Yeah. That's crazy, brother. Man, I'm just glad I wasn't born in that area of the world at that time. I like the music. It almost has like a cowboy western feel, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It's like the Americans uninvaded. <laughs> Living in France back then would have been so crazy, bro. That's her. That's her. Yeah, she ran. Was she just working at the the spot? So she's like 22. Qu'est-ce qu'il y a à partir de demain? Un festival Max Linder. Oh. J'ai toujours préféré Lender à Chef. Si ce n'est que Lender n'a jamais fait un film aussi bon que le Kid. Le grand moment de la poursuite du Kid, super. J'adore votre cinéma. Il est à vous S'il m'appartient Oui. Oui. Oh, that's your movie theater. She owns that. Comment se fait-il qu'une jeune fille comme vous possède un cinéma Ma tante me l'a cédé. Merci d'organiser une soirée allemande. Vous n'avez pas fini Je finirai dans la matinée. Puis je vous demander votre nom. Vous voulez voir mes papiers She is not interested in you, brother. I don't know if she's showing you like her ID or whatever. She's calling you a pig right now. Emmanuel Mimieux. C'est un très joli nom. Merci. Her name is Emmanuel. Mademoiselle, je me présente. Frédéric Sola. C'était un plaisir de discuter avec Consoeur Cinéphile. Beau rêve, mademoiselle. Adieu. She hates your guts. Right? I mean, your whole family These Nazi soldiers, yeah, killed her family. And she just has to live amongst them. That sucks. And it seems like they attend her cinema. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Puis je me joindre à vous. Écoutez, Frédéric. Oh. <laughs> vous souvenez de mon nom? Oh wow. Écoutez, vous avez l'air d'être un petit peu agréable. Merci. Je vous en prie. Je vous présente mes excuses, mademoiselle. J'essayais simplement d'être amical. Je ne souhaite pas être votre ami. Pourquoi Ne faites pas l'enfant, vous savez pourquoi. Je suis plus que juste un uniforme. Mais pas pour moi. Si vous cherchez désespérément une petite amie française, je vous suggère d'essayer de Vichy. Je comprends. C'est si Frédéric Zoller. Ja, wohl, das bin ich, Hauptmann. Das ist eine große Ehre, dich kennen. Mein Junge, die sind alle so stolz auf dich. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. I, I genuinely couldn't imagine sitting there saying hell to another man like that. Kedou, t'as qu'un simple soldat allemand. Vous êtes le fils de quelqu'un? Plupart des soldats allemands sont. Oh my God, sind sie es? So he's like popular. Sind sie es? Wenn der Frederik Zoller ist, dann. He's either popular or high ranking. Für meine Freundin ein Autogramm zu kriegen. Die größten Vergnügen. Vous avez rudement de la veine d'avoir mis la main sur elle. Non, 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 non. Mademoiselle ne pas ma petite amie. Alors comme ça vous êtes un héros de guerre. Qu'est-ce que vous avez fait Je me suis retrouvé dans le clocher d'une ville fortifiée. Moi tout seul et un millier de munitions dans un perchoir face à 300 soldats ennemis. Qu'est-ce que vous appelez un perchoir Un perchoir c'est comme ça qu'un tireur embusqué appellerait un clocher. Une structure haute offrant une vue à 360 degrés. You know what I'm about to say. Très avantageux. Bye, pour un tireur. I thought you were going to say what the sniper said I'm in the Spanish men of war. Saving private Ryan. Jeez. Le premier jour. 150. Le deuxième jour. 32. Le troisième jour. That disgusts her. Ils feront peut-être un film sur vos exploits. <laughs> eh bien, 
il s'intitule La fierté de la nation. Nation's pride. Je veux le wow. donner. Bonne chance pour la première, soldat. J'espère que tout ira bien pour Joseph et vous-même. Au revoir. She's a brave soul, disrespecting everybody like that. Especially when she's kind of in hiding, but she's hiding in plain sight. Tu me cherches, je serai dans la réserve. D'accord, chef. Oh, she said my love. Uh-oh. They something? Uh-oh. You think they figured her out? Oh, or that guy maybe had a like, hunch about her. That's why he kept running yeah, up on her. Yeah, because she kept turning him down. Yeah. That's such a cute little spot. Kind of. Beweg dein Arsch ins Auto. Did he just slap her butt? I'm not sure. He slapped something. <laughs> Dr. Joseph Hobels or something. I believe that's a real name. Like that, that one is not made up. C'est bien que vous soyez venu. N'étais pas sûr que vous accepteriez mon invitation. Invitation. C'est une besagte dame, Frédéric. Ja, wohl, das ist der Dr. Goebbels. Emmanuel, j'aimerais vous présenter quelqu'un. Emmanuel Mimieux, j'aimerais vous présenter au ministre de la propagande, le chef de toute l'industrie cinématographique allemande et maintenant que je suis acteur, mon patron, Dr. Joseph Goebbels. Er ruf halt den Voraus, Frau Mimieux. He has a crazy title, don't he? Mm -hmm. There's a couple people in America that deserve that title. Oh, yeah. Normal, voici l'interprète française de Dr. Goebbels, Mademoiselle Francesca Mondino. Bonjour. Bonjour. Et vous avez rencontré le Sturmbannführer. Bitte nehmen Sie Platz. But what do they want with her? Probieren Sie den Champagner, Mademoiselle. Der ist wirklich ganz gut. Moi, j'attends le Führer. Und den Schützen Zoll. Et le Soldat Zola. <laughs> Endlich nun gewährt mir der junge Herr Schütze eine Audienz. Tiens finalement une audience avec le jeune soldat. Und spricht er während des gesamten Essens nur von Ihnen und Ihrem Genom. Et il passe tout le repas à ne parler que de vous et de votre cinéma. Ich habe sie noch nicht eingeweiht. Francesca, maybe I'm a simpleton. Soldat Zola a passé l'heure du déjeuner à essayer de convaincre Monsieur Goebbels d'abandonner ses projets pour l'avant-première de son film et de changer d'endroit afin qu'elle ait lieu dans votre cinéma. Je voulais lui annoncer. Vous avez des loges? Vous avez des loges? Oui. Muss ich mir doch zunächst mal im Kino der jungen Frau einen Film ansehen, bevor ich ja oder nein sage. Also gut, Fräulein, Sie werden Ihr Kino heute Abend für eine Privatverführung schließen. Welche deutschen Filme haben Sie denn da? Ah, Landa, da sind Sie ja! Emmanuel, voici le Colonel SS Landa. Mm -hmm. Sera chargé de la. Do you think that she recognizes him? I think she recognizes him. I think she does. Him, oh I don't know gosh. about vice versa. I don't think he recognizes her. Au revoir! Oh, he saw the back of her head. <laughs> Or, ich fürchte, als Sicherheitschef dieses freudigen deutschen Ereignisses muss ich am Bellmini wechseln. Was für Worte? Keine Sorge, ihr zwei. Als Sicherheitschef muss ich einfach mit der Besitzerin des möglichen neuen Veranstaltungsortes ein bisschen plaudern. Oh no. Alors, comment se fait le jeune soldat et vous ayez fait connaissance Deux strudel pour moi et un pour la demoiselle. What is a strudel, baby? Moi, a pastry. Un café serré. Un verre de lait. A glass of milk. Il y a encore deux jours, j'ignorais l'existence du soldat Zoller et de ses exploits. Moi, le soldat n'était qu'un client de mon cinéma. Nous avons discuté quelques fois, mais... Mademoiselle, permettez-moi de vous interrompre. Ceci est une simple formalité. Aucune raison de vous inquiéter. m'excusez. J'ai oublié de commander la crème. Un instant. Commander la crème. Why did he give her milk? Unless just to mess knows. with her, right? Right. Or maybe he's just an absolute toddler. Or maybe he just doesn't want her to drink coffee. Alors, maybe women aren't allowed. Puis je vous appelle Emmanuel. Oui. Et donc, Emmanuel, expliquez-moi, comment se fait-il qu'une jeune femme comme vous en arrive à posséder un cinéma? Magnifique. À l'origine, le cinéma appartenait à ma tante et à mon oncle. Où sont-ils à présent? Mon oncle a été tué pendant la Blindstring. Tante Ada est morte de fièvre. Au printemps dernier. Regrettable. On m'a été signalé que vous employez un nègre, est-ce vrai Oui. C'est un Français. Il s'appelle Marcel. Il a travaillé avec mon oncle, ma tante et mon oncle depuis l'ouverture du cinéma. C'est la seule personne qui travaille avec moi. Faire quoi Projectionniste. What was the joke there Savez-vous faire marcher Marcel. un projet oui. Bien sûr. Non. Cute little container you got there for him. Il y avait une autre chose que je voulais vous demander. 
mais maintenant, sur ma vie, impossible de m'en oh souvenir. Oh my gosh Enfin, bon, ce ne devait pas être important. Ouh. Oh. À ce soir. This movie is so uncomfortable. I know, I'm on pins and needles. <laughs> oh wow, she was holding it together. <laughs> Some Greek news. <laughs> That poor guy wasn't even there, and they was talking so much junk about him. Mm-hmm. Putain, on est censé faire quoi là? Comment on est censé accueillir une première? Putain, on est censé faire quoi? Je parle de ça avec toi. Je te suis pas. De quoi parlons-nous? De remplir le cinéma de nazi et de le détruire par. Is she serious? Et avec la collection de 350 films nitrates de Madame Mimieux, on n'aurait même pas besoin d'explosifs. Si? That film is so flammable. Mm -hmm. At that time, 35 millimeter nitrate film was so flammable right. that you couldn't I, I know even what that bring is. Samuel L. Here, you can't bring those in a public vehicle. Right. They're films, ain't they? Yes. Then they're flammable. Going off off. Because People nitrate make jokes film about that. burns three times faster than paper. Jashana has a collection of over 350 nitrate film prints. Oh, she's about to get that payback, ain't she? On sait très bien tous les deux que tu me laisseras pas le faire toute seule. He's like you crazy ass white bitch. Parce que tu m'aimes et que je t'aime et que t'es la seule personne au monde en qui j'ai confiance. Je me rends pas se contenter de ça. Est-ce que le matériel de tournage du grenier fonctionne encore Je sais que la caméra en état, mais le magnétophone. Pourquoi avons-nous besoin de matériel de tournage Nous allons faire un film uniquement pour les nazis. Chapter four. Operation Kino. That's like, this movie's going crazy. That's like Kill right Bill, now. like revenge is the dish best served cold. I was sitting there thinking this is almost like Kill Bill in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Now she had that revenge and like she's planning like this master bling in. I think Quentin Tarantino got done dirty by a dude one time because he has a woman get even fantasy going on. Where's the toes in this? Lieutenant Archie Hickox, reporting sir. It's not over yet. General Ed <laughs> Fennick, at ease Hickox. Drink. If you offered me a scotch and plain water, I could drink a scotch and plain water. <laughs> Better boy, Lieutenant. It says here that you speak German fluently. Like a cat and jammer kid. And your occupation before the war? I'm a film critic. List your accomplishments. Well, sir, such as they are, I write reviews and articles for a publication called Films and Filmmakers. Brief him. Lieutenant Hickox. At this point in time, I'd like to brief you on Operation Keen Air. Three days from Joseph Goebbels is throwing a gala premiere of one of his new movies in... What film, sir? Motion pictures called Nation's Pride. In attendance at this joyous, germatic occasion will be Goebbels, Goering, Bormann, and most of the German high command, including all high-ranking officers of both the SS and the Gestapo, as well as luminaries in the film industry. The master race of play, All our rotten eggs in one... In one basket, mm -hmm. baby. The objective of Operation Keen Air? Love the Vonsky. An American Secret Service advert that lives deep behind enemy lines will be your assist. The Germans call them the bastards. The bastard. With an E. You'll be dropped into France, about 24 kilometers outside of Paris. The bastards will be waiting for you. First thing, you'll go to a little village called Nadine. In Nadine, there's a tavern called La Louisière. There you'll rendezvous with our double agent there. She's the one who's going to get you into the premiere. It will be you, her, and two German-born members of the bastards. She's also made all the other arrangements you're going to need. Damn, he's going undercover. Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. I suspect that won't be too much trouble for you. Your contact is Bridget von Hammersmark. Richard von Hammersmark, a German movie star, is working for England. Yes, for the last two years now. One could even say that Operation Kino was her brainchild. Indeed. Got the gist? I think so, sir. That's crazy. Parents sizzles. So they had, like, famous celebrities and stuff all in on it, too, God and everything like that? Like, like spies, double basement. agents? It would just be so interesting to go back in time and just really understand what it would be like to live in that era, because... The, the thing I take away from these movies more than anything is these people was just a cell phone away from living just how we live in a way. Yep, kind of. And it really is just so scary. Like they have cinemas, honest. like they're just chilling, living There's, their lives. Yeah. She was just eating at a cafe casually. You almost, you almost tell yourself like, you almost give yourself this idea that it was like a fight for resources and blah, blah, blah. I mean, obviously it wasn't, but it's just hard to imagine that. But you see two different sides. Like you see this yeah. side in, Fran in France, but then we remember Tom Hanks' side well, yeah. of it. I, I, it's just hard to imagine that people could be this brainwashed is what I'm trying to say. It's kind of crazy. You know, fighting in a basement offers a lot of difficulty. Number one being fighting in a basement. What if we go in there and she's not even there? We wait. Don't worry. He's a British spy. She'll make the rendezvous. I know where he's from. He's Magneto. Which one? Young Magneto. That guy. Oh, yeah, he is, isn't he? Right there. Yeah. 
I didn't know we were trying to figure out where he was from, but... Michael Fassbender. I hear you're pretty good with that. You know, we're not looking for trouble right now. Simply making contact with our agent should be uneventful. I need to know we can all remain calm. And I'll look calm to you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you do. That man is a calm, stone-faced professional. Mm -hmm. Whose idea was it for the death trap rendezvous? She chose the spot. She was picking a place isolated and without German. <laughs> 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 Hallo, ihr Lieben. Setzt euch schon mal. Mm, ich bin gleich bei euch. Ich verabschiede mich nur noch von meinen fünf neuen Freunden hier. Die Frau von Hammers mag, bitte, lassen Sie sich Zeit. Amüsieren Sie sich, wir warten. Oh, she's the double in it. Mm -hmm. Bridget. <lacht> ich dachte, hier kommen mehr Franzosen als Deutsche hin. Ja, normalerweise ist das auch so. Aber das Oberfeldwebels da drüben hat gerade ein Kind bekommen. Und sein vorgesetzter Offizier hat ihm und seinen Freunden den Abend freigegeben, damit sie feiern können. Wir sollten gehen. Nein, wir sollten bleiben. Zumindest für einen Getränk. Ich habe in einer Bar auf euch gewartet. Da würde es doch seltsam aussehen, wenn wir gehen würden, ohne etwas zu Sie hat recht. Bleibt ganz ruhig und genießt euren Whisky. Wir trinken auf unseren Freund Wilhelm und seinen kleinen Sohn Maximilian. Ja. Auf, Max! Auf, Auf Max. Max! Los! Es hat sich was Neues. Der Kino ist ausgetauscht worden. Warum? Man sollte aber kein wirkliches Problem sein. Das neue Kino ist wesentlich kleiner als das. Welchen Sprengstoff ihr alles für das Ritz mitgebracht habt, müsste dort doppelte Wirkung haben. So they're planning to... Also, at the same time, yeah. Andere Neuigkeit ist kolossal. I thought that's what they were saying earlier. Yeah, I thought so too, but I was like... I was trying to be patient. I thought maybe they had communicated. Frau von Pamme. Nur gerade vielleicht würden, würden Sie meinem Sohn zum Geburtstag eine Odu. I kind of sound like you, what you would name a rock roller. Ja. Maximilian. She's brave as hell too, though. Yeah, really. He never fails to give us a bar scene, though, right? Yeah. Quentin? Thomas Mark, was führt Sie nach Frankreich? Das geht Sie nichts an, Oberfeldwebel. Ich schlage vor dass sie das Fräulein nicht weiter belästigen und an ihren Tisch zurückkehren. Damn, his ego worked out in her favor. Entschuldigen Sie auch, Sturmführer, Sie haben einen sehr ungewöhnlichen Akzent. Mm. Woher kommen Sie? Sie müssen entweder betrunken sein oder völlig verrückt, dass Sie es wagen, mit einem Vorgesetzten so unverschämt zu sprechen. Oberfeldweber. Ich mache Sie und Sie verantwortlich. Sie greifen jetzt Ihren Freund oder er wird Max ersten Geburtstag wegen Trunkenheit in der Öffentlichkeit im Gefängnis Damn. verbringen. Dürfte ich nicht That's kind of stressful. Erkundigen. He called him out. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. He's like, something's up with you, basically. Look at that cup. <laughs> the shoe. Wie unser frisch gebackener Vater hier, habe auch ich ein sehr genaues Ohr für Akzente. Uh oh. Und wie er, nicht ihren äußerst seltsam. Woher stammen Sie, Hauptsturm? Ich bin in einem Dorf geboren, das im Schatten des Pitzpalü liegt. Haben Sie den Riefenstahl-Film gesehen? Ja. Yeah. Dann haben Sie mich gesehen. Erinnern Sie sich an die Schießszene mit der Fackel? Diese Szene spielen ich. Er war in dem Film und sein Bruder sieht wesentlich besser aus als ich. <lacht> <lacht> that one guy stayed serious. Did you see that? Yeah. Meine Herrschaften, darf ich mich zu Ihnen setzen? Gerne. So hell yeah, buddy, sit on down. Wunderbar. <lacht> Wunderbar. Das ist der Grund für Ihren bizarren Akzent. Ja? Das ist ungewöhnlich. Was tun Sie hier? Außer also mit diesem reizenden Fräulein ein Getränk zu nehmen. <lacht> Nun, dieses Vergnügens bedarf es keiner weit. Nein, ich meine hier in diesem Land. Ja, Sie sind ja wohl kaum in Frankreich stationiert, sonst wüsste ich, wer Sie sind. Und Sie kennen jeden Deutschen in Frankreich. Jeden, der es wert ist. Ah, <lacht> <lacht> uh oh. Ja. <lacht> Spaß beiseite, was tun Sie in Frankreich? Begleite die Dame zum Minister Goebbels Filmpremiere. Ach. She's a damn chain smoker. Der Hauptmann ist mein Begleiter, aber alle drei sind meine Gäste. Wir sind alte Freunde, kennen uns schon seit Jahren. Eigentlich viel länger als eine Schauspielerin. <lacht> <laughs> Dang, I, I wish I knew what they were talking about. <laughs> ich muss schon sagen, was die da drüben spielen, das scheint mir sehr amüsant zu sein. Ein Offizier sollte sich nicht mit einfachen Soldaten verbringen. Aber da wir ja hier alle Offiziere sind oder kultivierte Bekannte von Offizieren, <laughs> wie wär's, wir spielen es auch? Ja, gerne, ein Spiel. Wunderbar. <laughs> wunderbar. That means I like wonderful, Soldat. I guess, right? <laughs> Obviously. Wunderbar. Also Herrschaften. 
They need to get out of this. Die Idee des Spiels ist es, den Namen einer berühmten Person auf eine Karte zu schreiben. Fiktiv oder real spielt dabei keine Rolle. Sie können zum Beispiel die Person Ihrer Linken schiebt Ihnen Ihre Karte zu. So? Und kleben Sie sich vorne an die Stirn. Und mit 10 Ja oder Nein fragen müssen Sie. That guy wants murder right there, don't he? Yeah. Oh. Schreiben Sie. Schreiben Sie. Damn, he's fantasizing about the violence right now. King Kong. <laughs> so. <laughs> Bridget Horney. Uh, als ich aus dem Urwald nach Amerika fuhr ich da mit dem Schiff? Ja. Ich schah die Reise gegen meinen Willen? Ja. Yeah. Auf der Schiffsreise lag ich dann. Ja. Yeah. Als ich in Amerika ankam, wurde ich da in Ketten zur Schau gestellt. Ja. Yeah. Bin ich die Geschichte des Negers in Amerika? Nein. So, dann muss ich King Kong sein. Ah! Oh. Dang! <lacht> Bravo! Wirklich beeindruckend! Yeah. I don't know what type of spit they had back then, but that junk is sticky. Yeah. Also, wer ist der Nächste? They must be putting some de-stickifier in our toothpaste. Ich möchte nicht unhöflich sein, aber wir vier sind sehr gute Freunde. Und wir haben uns lange nicht gesehen. Also Sturmbahnführer, ich fürchte, Sie stören. Uh-oh. Graham. Ist es, Fräulein von Hammers, Mark, störe ich Sie? Nein. Das habe ich mir nämlich gedacht. Der Hauptsturmführer scheint einfach nur immun gegen meinen Charme zu sein. Es war ein Scherz. Nein, natürlich störe ich. Natürlich störe ich. Meine Herrschaften, gestatten Sie, dass ich Ihnen nachschenke und dann werde ich Ihnen und dem Fräulein Adieu sagen. Erik hat eine Flasche 33 Jahre alten Whisky aus dem Das ist sehr freundlich, Sturmbannführer. Erik, der 33er! Und frische Gläser! Wie viele Gläser? Ist die Authority, they talk to everyone with. Ich mag Scotch, right. Scotch mag mich nicht. Ich auch nicht, ich bleib beim Shampoos. Drei Gläser. He's bold. I thought that liquor was gonna be like a gun or something because he said it like so, you know, he, he said the date and stuff. I was like, oh shoot. Well, they're outnumbered in there. Mm -hmm. Haben Sie das gehört? Das ist das Geräusch meiner Walter, die direkt auf ihre Hoden gerichtet ist. Sie sind so deutsch wie dieser Scotch. Uh oh. Ich wollte sagen, dann sind wir zu zweit. Ich habe eine Pistole auf ihre Eier gerichtet, seit sie hier sitzen. Und ab jetzt sind wir zu dritt. Und auf die Entfernung bin ich ein richtiger Frederik Zoller. <lacht> Yeah, be slick now. About this pickle we find ourselves in would appear there's only one thing left for you to do. And what would that be? Walk away. Say auf Wiedersehen to your Nazi boss. Come on. Wow. That was such a good time. That was crazy. Like they were just chilling. Oh man, she got shot too, didn't she? You outside, who are you? British, American? We're American, what are you? I'm a German, you idiot. Big gang is pretty good for a German. I agree. <laughs> that accent though. <laughs> so let's talk. Okay, talk. I'm a father. My baby was born today. We were in here drinking, celebrating. They're the ones that came in shooting and killing. It's not my fault. It wasn't your fault. What's your name, soldier? Wilhelm. Now, is there anybody alive on our side? I'm alive! I'm not on the Who's that? It's a girl on your side, but I'm a smart. Yeah, she's ours. I was not Is she okay? But she's alive! No. She's about to become a hostage, huh? Oh, no. Okay, Wilhelm. What's your name? Aldo. Okay, Wilhelm, here's my deal. You let me and one of my men come down there and take the girl away. I don't think so. We just learned our lesson. I'm here, Willie. I want to trust you. But, mm -hmm. but I'm going to trust you. Come down. I don't empathize with him, but I ain't letting her go if I'm him. No. Just take that traitor and get her out of my sight. He's dumb as hell. <laughs> oh! Oh! This is goddamn fast, Doc. I'm going to go play with the dogs. How do you want that doesn't count for me. I need them toes in a super sexual manner, though. Englishmen give themselves away. How do you do that? He ordered three glasses. Oh, yeah, he did. That's the German three. 
the other looks odd. Oh, Remember, yeah. Remember, we think that's weird Germans. when people do threes what? like that. Right, because we're American. Because we, we do them like this. Yeah, that feels so odd. Yeah, but I can see when you're counting, like one, two, three. I can see that, but this is how I count. What was the next step? Tuxedos. To get them into the premiere, wearing military uniforms with all the military there would have been suicide. But going as members of the German film industry, they wear tuxedos and fit in with everybody else. I arranged for a tailor to fit three tuxedos tonight. How'd you intend to get them in that premiere? I never realized media and movies played such a role back then. Well, yeah, because they're distractions. I mean, yeah, but I just didn't realize. And apparently in know. this point, they're propaganda. Lieutenant Hecox was going as my escort. The other two were going as a German cameraman and his assistant. Something you don't know. Der Führer is attending the premiere. Fuck a duck. So Hitler's going? Is that what you got out of that? that wasn't that not Hitler? Means you're getting us in that premiere. Can you Americans speak any other language than English? We both speak a little Italian. Germans don't have a good ear for Italian. So you mumble Italian and brazen through it. Is that the plan? That's about it. Who does Dang, it? their plan went well, crazy. <laughs> I speak most Italian, so Italian. I'll be your escort. Donovan speaks second most, so he'll be your Italian cameraman. Omar third most, so he'll be Donnie's assistant. I don't speak Italian. Like I said, third best. Just keep your fucking mouth shut. In fact, why don't you start practicing right now? Yeah. Hugo. Sascha, Herr Obersturmführer. <lacht> Mit Ihrer Geschichte an ihn zur Koordination. Wahrlich bemerkenswert. Und der heißt Wilhelm Wicki. Ich bin bekannt dafür, deutsche Uniformen anzuziehen, um Einheiten in den Hinterhalt zu locken. Das bringt euch den Weiten. Wow. Es passt nicht. Oh, this turn turned into Cinderella. Oh no. Hier scheint, da fehlt jemand. Jemand Fashionables. Oh no. Talk about evidence. Bridget von Hammersmark. Chapter 5. Revenge of the Giant Face. What? <laughs> This movie's good. It is good. It's a slow burning drama for sure, and I'm trying not to miss anything or say nothing stupid, but it's a really good movie. It's really intense. Because you I just feel don't like know I'm there. who knows what. Like, that's the crazy part about it. The minute this movie's over, I'm gonna feel like I got out and I survived. Yeah. I don't know about the eyebrow pencil. They had those back then? Oh, yeah. That's so crazy. It's like when. <laughs> Isn't that what she was like? I like how she's redding out. Red nails, red lips, red dress. She says swastika all day, baby. Dang. They're playing that role, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> oh. She just added that little clip on. Oh, At the wow. End, yeah. <laughs> oh, the funeral thingy. <laughs> Do you see that's like Kill Bill, the filming? Love it. I kind of hate the way it looks in there. It just feels so dirty. I don't know. There's something weird about it. There's so many military people in there that are stressful. Yeah. Do you think that fan's helping? I don't think he's doing anything. Freundlein von Hammersmark. Oh, oh. Oberstlander, es ist lange her. Also, was ist mit Ihrem wunderschönen Bein geschehen? Tja, ich habe mich, dummerweise muss ich eingestehen, im Bergsteigen versucht. Mountain climbing. <laughs> That pretty much just confirmed everything for him. <laughs> He found the shoe and she's missing one. Gnädiges Fräulein, Sie kennen mich doch. Meine Scherze sind ein bisschen grob. Wer sind denn Ihre drei fashion -Bing? Es sind Freunde aus Italien. Ist der hervorragende Sensationsdarsteller Enzo Gorlo. <lacht> Italian stuntman. Lasciatemi vedere i vostri biglietti. 0023, 0024, non sarà troppo difficile di trovare. Arrivederci. 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 <lacht> <laughs> he's trying to spoil it or something. <laughs> yeah, he's not even trying. His accent is rough. His ego's too big. He won't even try. <laughs> he's a <at> Bajerno. <laughs> they really overdid that symbol back then, didn't they? Mm -hmm. It was on everything. 
Oh no, they have to go by all of them. Absolutely. They got the middle seats. <laughs> if you really want to hurt the Gestapo and the Nazi army, though, that's the place you attack. They could do a lot of damage. They say, ooh la la. Notre film arrive dans mon signal. Dans mon signal. Tu mets le feu. Dang, so they have to like switch it through different parts of the movie. Wasn't there something that really happened back then? It was like the Ragstad Theater or something that they burnt down and then they pretended. Let me know in the comments, guys. Let me know what I'm thinking about. You might as well just take him to the bathroom and strangle his ass. <laughs> He's only you, brother. Nine. Natürlich. Did you live in 12? Oh no. Lindsay and Fuss off my shoes. Here we go. Here we go, boys. Tarantino. It's toe time. Oh, and she bring me toes, to toes, the toes, 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 toes. <laughs> Wrong foot. That's the one I would have put too. I would have been like, this one. I like that shoe though. I don't care how scary the Nazis were, they wouldn't have been able to handle this damn Me Too movement. <laughs> Just stretch your toes in a web, then it can't fit. Ah. I don't know, like, ouch, ouch. <laughs> Ooh, so tight, ouch. <laughs> no. Damn, it'd be embarrassing to get strangled to death by that guy. No. I mean, to be honest, she was a straight gangster, though. Yeah, she, she set out. up everything. She went out like a stud. She was the Operation Kino gangster. The Kalim Vice is smoking. Dang! But they don't know about the other girl's plan. They don't. Nobody knows about it except for Marcel. Caught you flinching. There you go. <laughs> Headbutt him. <laughs> Kraut burger. <laughs> Kraut burger ass. They were like, if we want to have a, a soldier, we're going to hire uh, Brad Pitt, I guess, because right. he was the same way in Fury. Yeah. Same accent, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he should have just kept his ass in the field. He got, he got a little too close. Well, I don't think they took his friends, luckily. Tell me, Aldo, if I were sitting where you're sitting, would you show me mercy? Nope. Sie können wegtreten. Bleiben Sie am Posten draußen. As of this moment, both Omar and Donowitz should be sitting in the very seats we left them in. Explosives still around their ankle, still ready to explode, and your mission, as of this moment, is still a go. That's a pretty exciting story. What's next? Lies on the ice? However, <laughs> all I have to do is pick up this phone right here, inform the cinema, and your plan's kaput. Or is it? They're still here. There ain't no way you're gonna take them boys out setting off them bombs. I've no doubt. And yes, some Germans will die. And yes, it will ruin the evening. And yes, Goebbels will be very, very mad at you for what you've done to his big night. But you won't get Hitler. You won't get Goebbels. You won't get Goering. And you won't get Bormann. And you need all four to end the war. And if you get all four, you end the war. Crazy. If you want to win the war tonight, you have to make a deal. Over there is a very capable two-way radio, and sitting behind it is a more than capable radio operator. Get me someone on the other end of that radio with the power of the pen to authorize my, let's call it, the terms of my conditional surrender, if that day's better going down. Long story short, we hear a story too good to be true. It ain't. True. Sitting in your chair would probably say the same thing in the pages of history. Every once in a while, fate reaches out and extends its hand. What shall the history books read? Wow. So that accent is straight from Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> must destroy that tower. Uh -oh. Damn. Oh. They just caused a lot of disturbance. Come on, I'm ready to see this place burn down. They must not be planning on escaping. I don't think you can, do you? So they're on a suicide mission, huh? Oh. 
I mean, if you could end the that war. That was him on the TV. Did you see it? Yeah. He if you could end the war, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess the reason you wouldn't is because it's scary to burn to death. But And then if you get caught, they're going to torture you. True. And kill your family. Yep. But yeah, ideally, you'd hope you're brave enough to do that, right? Play it. That's a lot. Can't believe no one expected that. I want my full military pension and benefits under my proper rank. What a rat. <laughs> I would like the United States of America to purchase property for me on Nantucket Island. You have all that, sir? I look forward to seeing you face to face as well, sir. Lieutenant Rand, right here. Yes, sir. Colonel Landa will put you in private unit of it. Then he and his radio operator will get in the truck. Drive to our lines. On crossing our line, Colonel Landa and his man will surrender to you. We will then take over driving and bring them straight to me for... Is that clear, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. You must not like the way he's portrayed in the movie or something. Or he has some PTSD over it. Because wouldn't you? He was a Marvel villain too, right? Yeah, Zemo. Yeah. That's where he's from. It's been bothering me the whole time. Black Panther. In um, Age of Ultron. Mm. What a what a shot right there. Oh, he's going to see her. Oh my God. He's gonna escape this guy. What are you doing here? I'm coming to see you. Don't you see that I'm occupied? So, accept that I'm you. It's your first time. You're going to be in No, you can't stay here. Now, go ahead. Frédéric, you've made a mistake. Give me the key. We don't have a lot of time. Why? No, let it go. No, 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 wait. You want me to open the key? For the 50th time, yes. He's so arrogant, he buys it. That was the best. That was the best. And they couldn't hear because there's gunshot. Oh. No means no, brother. Don't help him. Hey, let that be a lesson. If a girl has to tell you no 65 times, she might just shoot your ass. <sighs> no way. Oh, no. That is not what we wanted. But Frederick, I mean, uh, Marcel doesn't know that. So maybe he'll still go on with the plan, but. Yeah, but I wanted her to switch to tape. Oh. Confirm your kills, everybody. You gotta confirm your kills. I'm making a t-shirt very soon. It's gonna say confirm your kills. That is the most constant theme in all of cinema. If you don't see them dead, they ain't dead. That's right. Damn. Like a James Bond movie over here. I guess, I ain't never seen it. Shut by you. Ah. Oh. It's like a punch gun. That was crazy. Is that a real thing? That you are all going to die. Close out! Where you go? And I want you to look deeper. Deeper. Can't believe y'all went to the same place. They tried to switch the venue to trick us up, but nope. No way! They just shot oh! Adolf. So this is the real way the war ended. That's how he deserved to go. Oh, that's why she wanted the audio to still play. That's so crazy and disturbing. Man, y'all gotta get out, get out. Damn, I don't know if I can show this on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> the projector got it on the smoke, dude. That's crazy. Wow. Damn, that's why they deploy two Air Force Ones when the president leaves. He's about to be like the greatest war hero of all time. I don't think he's gonna live. Why y'all stopping the truck? This is the American Kampflinie, Herr Standartenführer. Ausgezeichnet, Herr. I don't want that German gun. surrendering myself over to you, Lieutenant Rain. How about my knife? Thank you very much, Colonel. Shoot him. Yeah, what an idiot. You really thought they were about to give you, you a deal. Yeah. What have you done? I made a deal with you, General, for that man's life. Yeah, they made that deal, but they don't give 
about him. They need you. You'll be shot for this? I don't think so. More like chewed out. I've been chewed out before. <laughs> He's from Tennessee. You know, you'd bitch myself heard that deal you made with the brass. In the war tonight, I make that deal. How about you, you'd bitch you make that deal? I make that deal. I don't yeah. blame you. Damn good deal. And that pretty little nest you feather for yourself. Well, if you're willing to barbecue the whole high command, I suppose that's worth certain consideration. But I do have one question. When you get to your little place on Nantucket Island, I imagine you won't take off that handsome looking SS uniform, ain't you? He's gonna have to wear it on his forehead. Uh oh. If I had my way, you'd wear that goddamn uniform for the rest of your pecker sucking life. But I'm aware it ain't practical. I mean, at some point, you gotta have to take it off. <laughs> so, I'm gonna give you a little something you can't take off. Oh. Yeah, you can lie about who you are, yeah. but that scar is gonna tell the truth. Ouch! Good thing it's a simple shape, you know? Right. Good thing it ain't like a damn 3D diamond or something. Ah, like, like the S? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that little money S. <laughs> Something you bitch. I think this just might be my masterpiece. Oh shoot! Crazy. All right, guys, that was Inglorious Bastards. <laughs> that movie was absolutely insane. Quentin Tarantino did it again. I I'll be honest with you, the first thirty minutes of that movie was some of the most riveting TV I've ever seen mm. in my life, man. I. It was just so uncomfortable. There's not many times in cinema where you can really throw yourself into the situation but there was yeah. just something about just the way they portrayed this it really came across like reality a lot of times in movies things are romanticized and it's easy to disassociate from it but i really felt like i was there in right. this, and i think that's the biggest takeaway for me what do you I, think about this i like how we didn't know the whole time like if he knew or if he didn't know like so he was did a really good job of portraying like i don't know a neutrality how, yeah he was very evasive of the truth man he was mysterious and he was scary and it's scary enough that the nazis are going to sit there and mess with you it's scary enough that nazi occupied france just working on your farm just trying to be a good person you know and then all these soldiers pull up to your house and you have to sacrifice good people because you don't know what they're going to do to your family and right. if that's not intense enough then you got this jackass yeah. who's sitting there just completely screwing with you because he's obviously like a demon or something right just a crazy movie man i thought that if reality would have ended like this, that would have been the hardest ending in American history. Yeah. Uh, Hitler would have got his face shot in like that. Apparently, the man committed suicide or something like that. I, I don't think I'm... Apparently, the man unalived himself. I guess I got to cut that part out. Uh, so they say... I, I just don't think that's a bad enough way to go. But then again, I always thought there was something ironic about the fact that he had to ultimately make the choice to do that to himself because he deserved it. Yeah. You know, make he burn for a long time, but... Jesus, what a crazy movie. The biggest takeaway to me, guys, is just how recent this was. You know, this wasn't a completely different time in human history. I mean, this was yeah. literally just yesterday. I mean, people were using typewriters. Like our grandparents were alive then. They were going to movie theaters. Yeah. You know, like, just crazy. It's really scary to think that something like that could happen in such a modern time. But that's what happens, man, with all the state-sponsored propaganda and stuff. You just believe what you're made to believe. So... It's a crazy movie. Was that your favorite one from Tarantino? It's hard to say, man. It's so hard they to say. They all have their own feel to them. And this one was unique because it took all the Tarantino aspects where it had the chapters. It had us hanging out with the people for a little bit. It had like multiple plans. Like I even saw some Reservoir Dogs in there because, you know, in Reservoir Dogs, how like Group A would know the plan and then Group B would have to tell Group A. Yeah, and it yeah. was like they all had to come together at some point. It was, I liked it. Was it was definitely Tarantino. It yeah. felt Tarantino. You know, I was thinking, you know, with this movie, it could be so different compared to the other movies, right? Because it is a war movie. So I was just thinking there's an opportunity to really get away from what makes his movies great. Mm -hmm. But it didn't. It really right. kept us in line with the characters. We spent a lot of time getting to hang out with them. We got a lot of time knowing, you know, the small detail. It's all about the detail with Tarantino. Yeah, it is. You know, like someone could walk in a bar and shoot someone and it could be crazy. But with Tarantino, they're going to walk in the bar. You're going to get to know them. They're going to tell you a joke. You're going to play a little game with them. You're going to know all about their family mm -hmm. life. And I just, I think that with Tarantino, his formula of movie, a war movie, especially from this perspective, is just a given. You have to do it if you're Tarantino, mm. because the thing about, because it's just perfect, man. Like, this was the perfect type of story to tell through the lens of, like, a Quentin Tarantino directed movie. Because so much of war movies we get is so much action and violence and stuff mm. like that. We don't get enough of the slow, ominous social conflicts and all that stuff. And I just think we got a lot of that in this movie. This is a movie I could watch again and again. Right. Like all Tarantino movies. Right. I, I'm it excited was, it. About was it. like the French version of the war. Like what's going on there? It yeah. was interesting. I just couldn't imagine someone coming and occupying your country. I mean, I could imagine 
I, that would just be so annoying. That would just be, it would almost be the worst possible reality. You would almost rather blow yourself up in a theater than to have to live with that. Or at least I would. Some part of me just thinks that I'd be that type of person who just wouldn't be able to stand it. I mean, my, my mental illness would just creep in so hard that I eventually I would just feel like I had to do something about it. So I couldn't imagine being in, in Germany occupied France like that. I know France isn't the only place they occupied, but it was just really interesting. And to her see what family life was got like. her family got killed, and essentially she got to get the the revenge as the dish best served cold. But that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Like they murdered that girl's family, and then for four years she had to walk around knowing that everyone she comes in contact to is responsible. Right. How would that mentally just eat you after four years? It, it did. That's why I think when she was like, "Oh, this is my opportunity to take him out." Like when he started talking to her and then he walked away and she just, you could see all the emotions just flooding mm-hmm. her face, her face turned red and she started crying. That would be an everyday occurrence. And I mean, after over a thousand days of that, I mean, I, I really think and it would And she had the story. guy who killed multiple people in the war coming for her, like trying to get her number, all that cool stuff. Like just, just pretty much. I mean, I'm not saying he was harassing her, but he was He like, was definitely harassing her. 100%. But he was like he was every, every time she turned around, he was there. So it was like. She had to sit there and look at that too. So that's just like another thing. Like I don't know how much he was into her. Maybe he was extremely into her because she was like famous, quote unquote. Or she had a cinema. Or or maybe it was because I had a cinema. Or maybe five percent of it was he was suspicious and was really intrigued and even more. Yeah. So maybe it's like, dang, this is ninety five percent good, but five percent five percent of it just really makes me want to keep coming back and answering questions. There was obviously a power dynamic there. I mean. I mean, as a man, you don't walk up to a girl and get denied a thousand times like that. Yeah. You can tell if a girl genuinely is not into you, dude. And trust me, you don't want to keep beating on that drum. So there was there was some type of power play at work yeah. there, 100 percent. So I thought it was ironic that he got shot at the same time that his murder scene was on in his movie. You mm-hmm. know, something that he was so proud of. And I just thought it was ironic how all those people basically just met their demise in the worst possible way and they got what they deserved. Right. It's a crazy movie. I mean, shoot. I like how there was two plans and they were both like. They didn't know the other one was really there. Right. Well, yeah. they knew, but well, they didn't they didn't know about her plan, but she knew about their plan. Right. That was crazy. It was basically she allowed them to have a fail safe almost. Yeah. And that's what ended up. And because she would have told them that maybe something could have corrupted her plan. Dude, I'd never really considered much what it would be like to be like a black guy in France at the time of this or what it would be like to be black anywhere in the time of this. Um, cause I'm not even sure. Cause to be honest, I'm not really sure what the rules are when it came to Nazi Germany. Like I know they preferred people with blonde hair and blue eyes. Am right. I right. But you saw a lot of like brown headed brown. Right. Because it wasn't as simple as they just didn't like the Jews. I mean, it was or was it just that simple? I don't know, man. Uh, I mean, obviously, we. Yeah, I think it was. But I think it was because when he heard about the Italians, Italians are known to have dark features. They didn't really shriek at them. Yeah. It's just hard to understand this time in history, man. It's something that's really dark. And obviously, it's interesting to learn about. But it's not something that I particularly love to just sit around and learning about all day because it is very dark. And like I said, it is something that was real life to a lot of people not that long ago. So um, it's just sad stuff like this has to happen in reality. But what a crazy movie. You know, if bad things are going to happen, then at least Tarantino will make a good movie about right. it. Right. Put it that way. <laughs> like, it's crazy that it was a propaganda movie for, like, you know, for supporting Germany right. and all that stuff. And. <laughs> But everything's a propaganda movie. Right. Everything right, Americans right, right. make is propaganda too. Everything you watch on Disney Channel is propaganda. Every this movie is propaganda. This is anti-Nazi propaganda. That's all it True. is. Just depends on what type of propaganda you like. You know. So I I think it's funny how big of a role the movie theater and stuff played back then. Because maybe it's just ignorant to me. But when I think of those times, I think of like newspapers mainly. You know what stuff. I think of those times? I think of at least in America, I think of where we barely have anything to eat. We're like. We're literally giving food stamps to like get supplies and stuff. What so are you I did, about? like in America, we had to like ration and stuff, and they're like going to cinemas. She's able to just sit in a cafe casually. For me, I didn't think we would be able well, to do that. The thing about war, the thing about war is it looks different for different classes yeah. of people. Like uh, you know, during like uh I don't want to get it wrong, but recently over in the Middle East, they had like a revolution and what was it, the Egyptian revolution or something. There was bombings going on, people murdering each other, but five miles down the road, there was people sitting at McDonald's eating. So right, it's just one of those right. things, man. It's war's a war's not always what we think it looks like. This war obviously was, but war can look a lot different depending on where you it's are. It's just cool how in every movie we watch, it's depicted differently. Yeah. And it's depicted differently in ways because they're in just different areas, right? Different situations. 
So it was cool to see Brad Pitt in this situation, but see him in the tank situation. It was too. funny to see him try to pretend like he was country. <laughs> yeah. Because that brother ain't got a country bone in his body. He's straight from the coast to LA or something. Yeah. Else. His voice sounded absolutely crazy. When he when he gives a country accent, he has a really like deep tone to it. It's like this. I don't know what the hell he's saying. He's like, like bonjour. He's like, where was he from? Tennessee? Yeah. Is that where he said he was from? Yeah. Maybe I need to go back to Tennessee and talk to some of my Tennessee brothers out there, but I don't know anyone. They kind of sound like, like us mostly. He's, he kind of sounded like Forrest Gump to me. <laughs> like if Forrest Gump didn't speak, you know, the way that he does, he 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 gave me some Forrest Gump vibes. I don't know. Just like the dialect, the accent. Yeah, because you know Forrest Gump was from the deep woods of Alabama yeah. back then. So I like how his mentality movie. was. I'm in, in the business of killing Nazis. <laughs> I'm in the business of killing Nazis. That was. <laughs> yeah. That was like one of the my favorite quotes from this movie, probably. <laughs> right. Yeah, just the complete lack of humanity for each other is something that was really apparent in this movie. Mm -hmm. Just seeing how each side, and I mean, I understand, like, if you're a Nazi soldier, it's really hard to see the humanity in you because what you're doing is so disgusting. But just the fact that each side saw each other as so much less than human was really a, an interesting takeaway to me. But also, not to, not to like, you know, be on their side, but in Germany, I, I, you either have the choice, like, you join the Nazis or you died. Eventually, it became that way. Yeah, yeah so like, so in a way, you can kind of empathize for some of them, but not all of them. Right. Yeah, I mean, everybody knows, you know, there's a lot of stuff like that that goes on where if you take the wrong side of it, people come at your head and call you all this stuff. So a lot of the times, you really just don't have a choice, you know? And sometimes, you know, that's why I always consider I'm very lucky. You know, we're born in a time where we don't have to be forced to make these decisions. We right. live in a very peaceful time yes. in a peaceful place. Uh, I mean, I'm speaking for myself at least, but... Not often do I have to go out in the world and be forced to make really hard moral decisions yeah. like that. So that is something that I'm grateful for. I'm just glad I wasn't put in any of those type of situations, man. This has this movie had my palms sweaty the whole time. Me guys. too. We're That's like the thing. we're holding hands, but we're like sliding off each other. Right. Yeah. Because that movie, every single scene, pretty much with a. Uh, it was, was nonstop. What was her name? What was the main character's name? Uh, it was Shoshana. Every scene with Shoshana was stressful, just because I wasn't sure if they knew. It was her the whole time. Like, I just didn't know. Did they know it was her? Did the whole reason they came there was because they knew it was her? You know, I didn't really know. It was one of the most suspenseful movies I've ever seen. Yeah. hundred percent. It, it really was. It has you on eggshells. This one, out this of all. A good the, one. Well, I would say out of all the World War II movies, this one was my favorite. But I think Saving Private Ryan might have took that for me. But this one right here, I, I would say it's a close second. Dude, it's so hard to say. You know. Because Hacksaw Ridge was good, too. Well, Hacksaw Ridge and Saving Private Ryan were about... The themes of those movies were a lot different than yeah. this one. The reason that I really, really, really like this movie is because we got to see it from the perspective of the German soldiers. And that's something mm. we normally don't get to spend a lot of time Ever, doing. Ever. You never get to. You always see them as like an enemy. You don't really get to know them at all. Well, I still see them as an enemy. Well, yeah, I mean, but obviously. I'm talking about movies. But you know, what I'm you saying see is... see them as like the ops. You... It, it's like I was saying, you almost really dehumanize them when you learn mm. about them because you think to yourself, like, what kind of demon possessed person are you to think that? But we didn't think they could it, have kids named Max. <laughs> right. I mean, that guy was just out trying to celebrate his kids, you know. Mm. It, he had a life a too, movie. even though he was fighting in a war against us. Yeah, we get that. So, yeah, I mean, overall, I think that was a really good movie. I'm glad we watched it. I mean, I think all those people suck. They got what they deserved. I guess what I'm trying to say is I can humanize them in a sense, but. I just I still don't understand it. It's really hard to picture giving yourself. I mean, I'm not saying that I would be the most bravest person. I wouldn't. But what I'm saying is everyone just hopes that at the end of the day, you wouldn't give everyone up for your own sake, I guess. You know, right. Well, when your family's on the line, it's so hard. I just think that the Nazi soldiers were just so brainwashed on some level. They had to be so brainwashed, you know, but maybe they were just that evil. I don't know. Fuck them. Who cares? Uh, they ain't here no more. I thought this movie was kick ass, dude. I thought the girl in the end was just an absolute killer. Yeah. And I think that the Nazis even got the what Bridget they girl was a killer. Both girls did a good job in this movie. I thought the movie they was executed great. well. At the end of the day, man, it was just so explosive in the theater. Like if history would have played out that way, that'd be an event that have been that have been tougher than the Red Wedding in Game of Thrones. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So what a crazy. It movie. was like that a lot. Like they locked the doors and kapow. Right. Jeez. Um. So what's next? We have After Inglorious Bastards. Oh, Jude, I don't even know. It's the Django or Django. Okay. Yeah. I know. I know. Someone said the D silent, but why is you know I don't see a dash or nothing. Have like, you seen that movie? No, I haven't seen it either. I'm excited to watch it. Hopefully, it's just more of the same. I have no idea what it's going to be about. 
And so far, Tarantino. What's the worst Tarantino movie by ranking so far? It's probably by our ranking or no, their no, ranking? by like the you know people's. What's it called? The one where the stalker guy. The stalker guy. Yeah, you know the one where he's all like, "Get on the hood." Oh, death proof. <laughs> death proof. That's probably the worst one, right? I, I would worse say worse in terms of. I what, feel though, like every know? movie we've seen so far has been like genuinely like one of the better movies i've ever seen death proof was okay i mean it was a it was a crazy movie because it was crazy it wasn't one of the best movies i've seen so that one was the worst one to me so far and i think inglorious bastards is it's like i want to say it's the best movie but i don't really know how willing i am to just like tear kill bill down like that or y'all even well, jackie brown it's not even just kill yeah we yeah, quote, that we, movie more we than quote any jackie movie. brown so much and i do that baby and i do that baby yeah all we're singing that all day we always say uh 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 you didn't uh, wash uh, your uh. hands <laughs> <laughs> what's the other part that we always say i always make fun Street of women life. yeah <laughs> Street life. And, uh, and to me, like, if I'm ever talking about a girl that ain't no good, I call her, uh, what's that girl's name from it? Melanie. Melanie. Yeah, she's the worst. Um, <laughs> so anytime I see, like, a stoner girl, she's Melanie to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, even that movie was, and a lot of people didn't watch it on YouTube. It was one of our worst performing movies we've ever put out on YouTube. But, but for no damn, reason. That's a damn shame. Yeah, I think no everyone reason. should see Jackie Brown. Yeah, if you haven't seen Jackie Brown, you're wild. That movie, I hope you're hearing this right now, and I hope you stop what you're doing and you go watch it. I feel like Jackie Brown reminds me of like GTA or something. Because yeah, just because it's so like because okay, Samuel L. in that know. one, he was funny. he's top tier in that. He was funny. I think that was his my favorite performance. Yeah, not not so just many his people said Pulp Fiction, but to oh, me, dude, no, he killed it in Jackie Brown. Jackie Brown, that's that's when his he best convinced that guy to get in the in the <laughs> trunk with a gun. He says it's dirty in there. Uh uh-uh. uh. He said I hate to be one of those. Who always got to come up here and ask a question, but today I got to be that. Because <laughs> he would get people out of jail and then make him make them do him favors. <laughs> that John's crazy. And then he would kill them. Guys, uh, basically, no. we have a lot more Tarantino to watch. We're going to finish every Quentin Tarantino movie. And hopefully this dude puts out another one because I'm pretty sure as soon as we get done, I'm going to just want more. So thank you guys so much for hanging out. Like, comment, subscribe. This movie was absolutely insane. I know it's a movie about a super sensitive subject, so sorry if I seemed ignorant at any point in the movie um you know what i'm saying but i, I feel like that recently. i feel like it was more taken that way like we're in other world war movies and in, in other world war ii movies we would be like crying boohooing you know like well my thing is every time we watch a movie or something like this there's a certain segment of people who just want to come on the movie to test our knowledge and then if if we know less than then it's because we're young and stupid and what is the education system doing these days and all that so hopefully we did a good job hopefully we you know had a pretty good grasp of what was going on I thought the movie was crazy. I will definitely be watching it again. Mm-hmm. And I had a lot of fun, man. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit us up on Patreon if you guys want to see the full uncut reactions. Let's go.